So um, we're going to be doing a lot with Sam Bam files over the next um, couple of days. And it's kind of useful to dig into them a little bit and have some familiarity with what they are. So I think for a lot of people, a BAM file is like really a black box, right? Like they get a BAM file and maybe they feed it to another piece of software, but they don't necessarily understand like how to read it or what's inside it. But that can be useful for things like just basic QC or as soon as you need to do something that the like next tool doesn't quite do, there may be a time when you need to actually kind of like interact directly with the BAM file and understand how it works. Um, so there is a specification we link there. Um, we already talked about how SAM is just the uncompressed version of the BAM file. BAM files are usually indexed. So we keep hearing about indexing. You build an index to go along with your BAM file so that it can be read in by like things like IGB. This is what a BAM file looks like. Um, so it has two parts. It has a header section that has information about from like the sample that was aligned and the program that aligned it. And then it has the alignment section where each row of the file basically has information about a read and how it was aligned. So it's a little bit hard to make out, but <clears throat> you have like a read name that's very similar to what you saw when you were looking at your FASTQ files. There's a, a flag. We're gonna talk about what that means. Um, I think next up is like the position in the reference or the, the reference record that you're aligning to. So this is chromosome one and the position in chromosome one. Uh, then I think this is a mapping quality cigar string, um, then the um, reference sequence in the mate pair. So when there's an equal, it just equal sign, it means it's the same. So the, the in this case, the mate pair is also mapping to chromosome one. And then here's its position. And then I think this is the length or size of the fragment. And then the actual sequence itself, and then the quality string. <clears throat> so that's just for memory. Um, we'll look at in a minute, see if I'm right about the order of things that are in there. This is just reminding you about the header section. So the header has things like um, the sort order of the alignment. So sometimes it can be useful to just look at a BAM file and look at the header. If you're trying to understand like, what is this data? Where did it come from? You can find information like in the read group area about the library or the sample. You can see what program was run on it. Sometimes this will give you information about like the, the type of aligner that was run or the reference genome that you were aligning against um, might be specified here. So it can be really useful sometimes to, to dig into the, the SAMBAM header section. Uh, this happens to us all the time, like especially if someone gives you data or you like download alignment data in BAM format. There's like a kind of a paper trail in here, like a record of how, how we got to this BAM file. And you might look at it and decide like, oh, I don't really like the way they did this. I want to get the FASTQ and like redo the alignments or something. Um, let's see. We already talked about this, how it's divided into two sections. Um, this is just kind of looking at some example data in uh, an example header section. So here you've got things like um, the read group ID. So um, you're getting like uh, like sample ID and sample name. And um, here's like an example of a program record where it show, tells you that BWA was run and um, it can actually have like details of the specific command that was run, which can be helpful. Uh, and then this is just a bit of a zoom in on the alignment section, which I should have used when I was pointing out all of the parts to it. Um, but that's just those, an example of what 10 alignments look like. And we're gonna break some of these sections down. So this is the order of those entries. So each um, item is separated by a tab. And then these are the 10 or 11 things that are in each row, each alignment record. So again, you have the um, query name. So this is the name of your read usually. There's this flag, which we'll talk about, uh, the reference name, the position of your alignment, 
the mapping quality score, a cigar string, which we'll talk about, um, and then information about the uh, read pair, where, where it aligns, the length, uh, the sequence, and the quality. And these are just examples of what those look like. So any questions about like the contents of a BAM file on the records? It's an attempt to kind of like demystify because I think when most people see this, they're like, what is this gobbledygook, right? But if you like break it into its parts, it's actually not that scary. It's not that much more complicated than a FASTQ file. You've got your, your read name, um, where it's aligning to, where it's mate is aligning to. The actual sequence is there. So that can be helpful if you need to like work your way backwards. Like you can actually revert from this back to a FASTQ file if you need to. Um, and that's possible because the sequence and the quality string are still there. They're still in the alignments, right? So you could get back to like a simpler version of your data if you, for example, want to like realign it, but you don't have the raw FASTQ data. That happens to us all the time too. And a lot of places actually don't keep the FASTQ files. They just keep BAM files because they know that they can revert to the FASTQ file from the BAM file. So just to save on disk. Uh, okay, so we talked about this. There's just two elements of this that we're gonna talk about a little bit more. So there's this thing called the flag and there's this thing called the cigar string. So this flag um, is basically a way to encode a whole bunch of information in a really efficient way. So what it is, is a series of so-called bitwise flags represented as a single number. So you're essentially storing a binary string of, and this keeps changing over time as they add more, but I think it's still currently 12. So what you're doing is you're, you're representing a binary state of 12 questions with the value zero or one. So zero, you can think of as no, one you can think of as yes, and then each value in the string of zeros or ones represents a property. So for example, is the, is the alignment representative of a duplicate? That's represented by this second last value here. If it's a zero, it's not a duplicate. If it's a one, it is a duplicate, okay? So it turns out that there are um, two to the 12 possible combinations, right? You've got zero, 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 zero. You've got one, zero, 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 one, one, zero. You get what I'm saying, right? So there's like two to the 12, which is 4,096 possible combinations. So that means you can represent all of this information, the, the status of whether it's a duplicate or not, whether it's a supplementary alignment or not, with a single number between zero and 4,096. And that's what is in that field of the BAM file. So if we go back to like one of our examples, this particular um, flag is 99. So 99 corresponds to one set of values. Oh, thank you. And there's a handy tool, which we're gonna play around with in the practical, where you can go to this website and just enter the number 99 and it'll tell you which of those properties that particular alignment has. So it'll just like go through the, the permutations and say, yes, this, no, that, and so forth. Any questions about these so-called bitwise flags? This is important because if you wanna filter your BAM file for some reason, like let's say someone asks you, I don't know, how many reads were there in your, um, sample that were properly paired duplicates or something like that. You can like figure out, you can go to this website, you could check those boxes for the properties you care about. It'll tell you that number and you can run a single command that says, give me all the alignments with this value. And that will give you all the alignments that have the properties that you're looking for. Super simple. You guys are gonna like play around with it later and hopefully get more of a sense of it. The other kind of confusing thing is the cigar string. So cigar string is one of those other columns of information. And this is um, basically another space saving innovation, which is a really efficient way to describe an alignment. 
So it's a string of, or it's the cigar string is a sequence of base lengths and operations indicating which base is aligned to the reference either. And it doesn't distinguish actually between match or mismatch necessarily. Um, and so it, it can represent deletions, insertions, introns. And so there's all these different kinds of operators, like the most common or obvious one is match. So there's a series of positions that match the reference. Um, there can be insertions relative to the reference. There can be deletions. Um, there, you can represent soft clipping and so on. So I think the easiest way to understand this is with an example. So this is an example cigar string, 81M, 859N, and then 19M. What this is describing in a pretty efficient way is a 100 base pair read consisting of 81 bases that match the alignment matches, 859 bases that are skipped, and then another 19 that are matched. So this could represent a kind of split read, exactly like the ones we looked at in the last lecture, right? Where you've got part of the read aligning to an exon, then there's an intron, and then the rest of the alignment picks up in the next exon. So it's kind of like if you've ever done like a blast search, you know, and you have your read, and it shows you that kind of like simple graphical depiction with all the little lines showing you where it matches, and then there's like a gap, and then another th series of matches. It's, that's a nice visual way to look at an alignment, but it takes like a lot of characters, right? It's like, you know, fills pages. This is like a really efficient way to convey that same idea. And so software programs can like look through the BAM file and use that information in various ways. Uh, just really quickly, CRAM files. So we've talked about BAM files. CRAM files are just an, that sort of next innovation in compression that give you even smaller files so something like 30 to 60% smaller than the BAM file. The BAM file is basically like a gzip SAM file. Like it's just using like regular text compression technologies. The CRAM file is using knowledge of the reference genome. So you actually, when you create a CRAM file, you supply a reference genome. And by kind of knowing the reference genome, you can, you can basically compress that um, alignment even more because you can do things like, it's almost like the cigar string. You can say this 100 base pair read, this 100 base pair span matches like position here to here. And that's a really efficient way of just storing what that alignment is. It's much more efficient than, um, or it's a way of, I guess, storing even what the sequence is. You can just say like the sequence we're talking about here is the 100 base pair reference sequence from position A to position B. You can represent that much more efficiently than actually storing the sequence itself in a file, even when you compress that sequence. Yeah. yeah can you ever miss, um, like alter the data or like accidentally collect it by converting to convert it to different things? Yes. And there's a couple different things. So one is that I think some of these um, compression standards involve um, compressing the quality string, the quality representation to a simpler format. So you can lose some specificities of the quality depending on the settings. And then in a sense, you can lose things if you lose the reference that you use. So this actually happens where you like download CRAM files from SRA, but you they did not properly document the the reference file they used to compress the CRAM file. And then you have a problem where you can't uncompress it or you're kind of guessing how to correctly uncompress it because maybe they use like some janky custom version of the reference that they use in-house that's not obvious or available. Um, so I think like now SRA is much better about making sure that when you submit CRAM files that you properly you actually submit like the reference you used, but there's still a bit of like faith that, because I don't know if they like actually like go through a full decompress and recompress cycle and make sure it, it works, you know? Yeah. So that's a good question. Yeah. So this basically kind of stores like a diff from the reference genome, which allows it to be really efficient. 
Uh, I think you guys have seen bed format so far. No, maybe. Um, bed format is just another commonly used uh, file format. It's much simpler than the BAM format. It's just a tab separated plain text file that has um, minimally uh, the chromosome name, the start and the end, and then other optional columns. So there's a number of different flavors colloquially referred to as like bed three, bed four, bed six, bed eight. Um, it always starts with just chromosome start stop like this chromosome start stop, but then it can have up to nine additional fields, including a name, a score, the strand, uh, and then these thick start, thick end, and so forth are um, columns that you use if you're planning to upload your bed file to a tool like the UCSC genome browser, and you want to stipulate how the, the features in your bed file look. So like, are they the thick bars in UCSC, or are they like thick and then thin and different colors and so forth? Uh, but the most common is just actually like the first three or maybe the first five or six. And then uh, I think Malachi already introduced you to tools like bed tools, which you can use to manipulate um, bed files. Uh, similarly, there's things like SAM tools, BAM tools, Picard. We are going to use these extensively, especially SAM tools and Picard, uh, to manipulate our BAM files and SAM files. Some common sources of confusion. Um, these come up in basically all genome related bioinformatics. Uh, the most common source of confusion is the coordinate system. So have you guys heard of like one based and zero based coordinate systems before? So it turns out that like the bioinformatics and genomics world could never agree on whether you should represent your genome coordinates with a zero based or a one based system. So what does that mean? Basically one base is where you count the bases directly. So if this is chromosome one and this is literally the first nucleotide in your chromosome and it happens to be a T, you would number that T one and so forth. It seems logical, right? Like the first, the second, the third. I feel like this is maybe the more human interpretable or intuitive, but it turns out that for various like mathematical and computational reasons, there's a lot of efficiencies to actually numbering it starting with zero in which case you number the positions between the bases. So like zero is like the position before the first base and one is position between the first and the second and so on. And these two systems have their pluses and minuses, but they just, their consequence is that like representing something like a single nucleotide looks slightly different depending on whether you're using a one based or a zero based system. And then the whole world, as I said, is kind of split evenly between them. So certain file formats are one based like SAM and some file formats are zero based like BAM, um, which is kind of funny. And BED is like kind of maybe the most famous zero based file format. So that's just something to be aware of. It's just a super common gotcha. You just have to deal with it. Genome builds, um, just make sure you're using the right genome build. This will probably happen at some point in the course that we'll go to load some data in IGV that was aligned with HG38, but we've selected HG37 and the data doesn't make sense. That's because your data is like mismatching with your reference genome. And then there's this idea of variant shifting and parsimony. Uh, I think this is the last one. We don't do a lot with variants in this course, so I won't spend a lot of time on this, but the, the idea is that there's more than one way to represent a variant. So in this case, we have um, a deletion of a CA. So if you look at this reference sequence, which is GGG, CA, 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 GGG, and there's a CA missing, normally, unless you do some very complicated molecular biology, you really have no way of knowing which CA was deleted, right? Like you, you know the reference has five CAs and you know your sequence has four, but it could have been any of those five CAs that was deleted. And for the most part, you really don't care, right? It's gonna have the same consequence on the protein. But the problem is we can't all agree again on like which way we should represent it. So there are like various different ways. These are all valid or like, correct in a sense ways to represent this, but some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, some of them have the variant at the right, some of them have the variant at the left. 
And so if you're um, getting into variant representation, there are certain like formats or standards and conventions that say like you should left shift, like have your variant be as close to the left as possible. Uh, you should have it be parsimonious, which is the variant should, the alleles of the variant should be as short as possible as long as they're greater than zero. Um, so long story short, like this bottom one is a good representation because it is short and it is, I guess, as far to the left as possible. So that would be, um, I guess, a more standard way of representing it. Uh, how should I sort my BAM file? We're going to come across this. You Before you index a BAM file or use it, you will often need to sort it. The most common thing to do is sort by position. So we're going to sort, I think, in this course, mostly, if not always, by position. But occasionally, you may find that you need to sort your BAM file by read name. Um, this is um, usually done when we need to easily identify both reads of a pair. So like one common example is fusion detection, where you're trying to compare, like you're really focusing on where the two reads are in relation to each other. Um, and so you might sort by read name and to be more efficient for that kind of a, an application. So those are the lectures. And we're going to start with practical tomorrow on alignments. Thank you for your attention, guys.